through a little bit of hard work, we now have the ability to say exactly what value of k works better than some other given values. Of course, it still looks like these different values of k that we're making use of have some variability depending upon exactly how we create that test set. So I think that we still need to look at some other ways of improving our KNN algorithm. The next thing we're going to start to work on is adding more features to explain the analysis. So remember, right now, we've got a couple of different variables or features that are floating around. We've got the drop position, we have the bounciness of the ball, and we also have the ball size. But at present, we are completely omitting the ball bounciness and the ball size from our algorithm. And we're only taking the ball drop position into account. Now that was definitely fine before, because we had a version of our KNN algorithm that worked with a single independent variable. So we're now going to start to modify our algorithm and have it take into account multiple variables, in addition to just the drop position. Let's talk a little bit about how we're going to modify that algorithm to include multiple different features. All right, so here's the modified algorithm for using multiple variables. Now, I could definitely walk this thing step by step, but I'm going to tell you right now, the only real step that changes in the entire flow is that distance calculation. Before, we were trying to figure out how similar or dissimilar a drop position was to all of our different observations. We're still going to do the exact same thing, but now we're going to be finding the distance, so to speak, between multiple different features. To give you a really good idea of how this is going to work, let's first walk through exactly what was happening before when we were only taking the drop position into account. So this is what we're doing right now. So we've got our training set over here, where we've got all these different data points. We've got the drop point, the bounciness, the ball size, and the bucket it went into. So essentially, with our training set, we took each of these different values, so first 40, and we kind of graphed it, so to speak. You can imagine that we kind of graphed it on this chart. We then put another data point on for the 150, so maybe that would go right around there. We then had our 350, so maybe right there, and then the 425 right here. After we put those together, we then said, okay, our prediction point, how close or far away is this thing from any of these existing points? If the prediction point had a 323 drop point, then we would take this thing and put it maybe right around there or so. So if we then said that we had a k of 1, we would look at that data point right there as being the closest, most similar drop position. And so whatever bucket that thing went into is probably where this one is going to go into as well. If we had a k of 2, we would maybe consider this point and this point. And if we had a k of 3, it'd be the closest 3, and a k of 4 would be all four of those data points put together. Now, again, the key thing to keep in mind here is that the very simple distance calculation that we're using right now so inside my code editor, here's that distance function. We were just finding the straight line, one dimensional distance from point A to point B, and then taking the magnitude or absolute value of that distance. And that fit this chart right here very well. So how is this going to change with a second feature or even three or four or five features being added in? Well, essentially all that changes is the chart that we're using to find our distances. So let's do that same exercise, now taking our drop position and our bounciness into account. So again, we'll say for 40 and a bounciness of 0.5, maybe that line would be, or that data point would be like right there or so. Then 150 and 0.25, or 0.52, excuse me, that'd be maybe right about there or so. 350 and 0.55, that'd be maybe up here. And then 425 and 0.53. So let's see, maybe right around there, a little bit higher, right there or so. So then our prediction point was 323 and 0.25. So that's maybe, or 0.52, sorry, I keep on mixing that up. I think this was my other 0.52 right there. So I think 323 might be like right about there or so. I think that's reasonable. Okay, so now we would want to find the distances between all these points and our prediction point and see which one was closest. Now remember, in our 1D case back over here, we had said that the 350 data point was very, very similar to our prediction point. But now, this time around, if you look, our same 350 point from the training set is all the way up here, and it no longer appears to be the closest to our prediction point. Instead, it looks like this point and this point are the closest. Maybe this one's a little bit closer. And of course, I'm not being really exact where I put these data points. So clearly, by introducing these additional features, 
into our comparison, we are dramatically changing which point we consider to be closest or more similar to these other data points as well. Now, the last thing we have to really consider is, all right, we understand that we're going to include multiple variables in this comparison or multiple features, but how are we gonna actually change this distance formula right here? How are we going to find truly how far or close away one point is from another? Well, to do so, we're gonna use the very classic Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem, we take a triangle of sorts where this C or the hypotenuse is going to be the true distance from one point to another. So back in this diagram over here, if we wanted to find the distance from our prediction point to maybe this one up here, that C or the hypotenuse would be the true distance between these two points. And to calculate that, we would take the difference in one direction or the X axis, the difference in the Y axis, we would square them, add them together, and then take the square root of all that. And that would give us the distance between those two different points. So in other words, to change out our entire algorithm and make it work for multiple dimensions, all we really have to do is update our distance formula right here, and also make sure that when we pass in these data points to that distance formula, we consider all the different features that are relevant. So the drop position, the bounciness, and the ball size as well. So let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back to the next section, we're gonna to start to update our KNN algorithm to take into account multiple different features. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute.